Hey everyone, it's Nelson Miller here with PA Creative. Today I'm excited to announce an update to our Divi Table of Contents Maker. So this plugin is now at version 1.3, a lot of new features and a lot of little improvements. Let me show you everything that's new. I'll just follow along with the written blog post and if you wanna do that, you can click the link in the description if you're on YouTube. Now, as far as new features, this is kind of a big one here to start off. So we've always had the option where you get to decide what headings are automatically generated in the table of contents. And so we had an exclude option where you could enable the toggle and then put a CSS class in like, let's say the sidebar or the footer or maybe somewhere in the header where you did not want those headings like H1s, H2s, you didn't want those to be in the table of contents. So we were, we were treating it like all headings on the page will be included except what you say to exclude. Well, as I was thinking about that, I thought, wouldn't it be easier if we had an option to include rather than exclude? Because a lot of times you may have just a post content module. In the module here, now you will see another option. It's in the content settings. So this is now a drop down toggle instead of like an on off switch. So it says include or exclude headings. So this is like a reworked setting. If you were using the exclude option before, it should automatically be on exclude specific headings by class like that. But I, do just, I just wanna say double check it when you update. Um, I wanna make sure that you have this correct and I don't want, you know, don't want your table contents to look bad if it would be some glitch. Um, it should automatically go to exclude if you had it enabled, but if not, just double check it, okay? So now there's like the default will be include all headings, and now we have the new one, include specific headings by class. So when you click that one, and you can read about it here, now you'll put the class PAC DTOCM include instead of exclude. It was the same class as before. So it's gonna to continue to work like it did. We just have an extra option to only include. That way, the reason I did this is because instead of adding like exclude to here and to here and to here and here, now you can just add it once to like, only want this post content module, you know? Okay, hope that makes sense. I hope I didn't over explain that, but it's, it is important and it's, a, it's actually a big deal. Um, if you're starting new websites, probably use the include option, It'd probably be easier. Uh, we just added a new heading marker for decimal numbers. Um, you may have already known we had decimal numbers, but it was based on the parent. Let me let me show you real quick visually what I mean. So I'm gonna go to here. So let's say um, for heading level two, I'm gonna put this to, um, well, the new one is decimal numbers, okay. Um, now I'm gonna put it to this one that we had before, decimal numbers of parent level. Okay, now watch this. I'm gonna duplicate it and then I'll show you the difference visually. It'll make a lot more sense if I show you. I'm gonna choose this new option. So it's just decimal numbers, not of parent, but just, you know, like that, okay. So here you can see the two table of contents are very different. At first glance, you may not notice it. Let's look at the first one. So remember in the first one, I chose of parent level. So notice how like, it's 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. So those are like the main headings, right? Inside each one is a second level. Notice how it says 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. When we get to two, it continues 2.1, 2 2.3, 2. Right? Down here, look at the difference. It starts over. So 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, but then inside each level, it's starting over. One, two, three, one, two, three. That's the new feature, this one here. Um, because someone asked for that and I realized that makes a lot of sense. Like sometimes you may want it to be like this and other times you may want it to be that where, you know, within each level it's like starting over. It makes a lot of sense. Um, so hopefully that really helps you understand it visually seeing it like that. Um, another option is to just hide the entire header, this like purple part, like the entire purple part there, right? You don't need to say table contents or if you don't want it to be even collapsible, then yeah, you could just have it without the header. Um, we actually had feature requests for that. So there you go, you can turn that off. Uh, let's see, oh, to show or hide the icon. Now here's where it's interesting. 
We also added to put the icon on the left, right? So it's always on the right by default. And when it's collapsible like that, here's the thing. You may not want it to be collapsible. You may still want there to be an icon though. And if you still want it to be an icon though, um, in fact here, uh, let's see. Oh, allow collapse and expand. So I can turn that off. Well, now there's still an icon there before the icon would hide. So I still have show icon. So I still have to decide, do I want the icon or not? Well, maybe I do. Maybe I, um, oops. <laughs> maybe I want to um, put a decorative icon there, right? So here's what, I, here's what I like to do. I like to put it on the left. And you can put it on the left when collapsible, but here, this is what I like to do. Something like that where it's just decorative and like it doesn't, doesn't look like I need to click it. It's just there. Here's the table of contents, you know? So I thought that was cool. We kind of worked the logic to make sense where you don't need to have that on or off. You still get to decide if you want an icon, whether or not it's collapsible. That makes sense to me. Actually, another one that makes sense along with that is limit content height. So uh, in the design tab, in the content toggle, so by default, we always had it at this 400 pixel height. And if you reached that height, it would automatically you know, stop the height and then add a scroll bar within it. Well, that makes sense to me, but there's sometimes where you just want it to be full height. So I was like, how do I add that where it's auto height? Well, instead I added this setting limit content height. And so by default, and it, again, you gotta think about existing customers when you're making a new feature. That we have it at limit content height on by default. That way, no one that's using this will be affected by it. But if you want, either on new sites or your existing site, you can come in here and turn that off. Well, now there won't be any 400 pixel height or whatever you had it at. There won't be any scroll bar. It will simply be as tall as it needs to be. Um, in fact, I could show you that by setting like this one real small. And then I'll set this one. It's kind of nice having both of them here. Where's it at? In the content here. I'll turn that one off. So I'll just show you that here. Yeah, it's not a good example because it's not very tall. But you can see that even if I had double the amount of headings, if it came way down here, it would still just keep expanding rather than cut off like that. So I hope you like that as well. Now, as far as other features, that's like the main like new features, but let's look at the change log because look at that. That is one giant change log for this little plugin. There's, a, there's so many little improvements. Um, the, the plugin is becoming very popular. And so as we get more users, you get more like fringe use cases and like these odd situations. And sometimes I'm like, oh, you're using it this way or whatever. And so there's little things that we have to fix. Um, what's a good example? Like, um, well, here's one with a specific plugin or, oh, like this person had four wheelers. So he kept putting four by four and, and our code wasn't like, it didn't know what to do with a four X four in the code and didn't know how to make the heading. So like little things like that, it was like, oh yeah. Um, the email opt-in message, when they had an email opt-in module on a page, for some reason it was showing like the success message. Uh, specialty sections, it should work perfectly good now in specialty sections. There was also one, maybe that was in the last update. Oh, here's like with a recipe maker plugin, it was putting the headings in, it just wasn't excluding those because they were like so hard coded. Another one with a short code, I think, just different like scenarios like that that we have to account for because remember, we're automatically like getting the code. And uh, another good thing to point out is the accessibility improvement. So we fixed like any ARIA accessibility warnings. Another one is uh, when, you were, when you're scrolling here, which I'm not gonna be able to do it. If I make this sticky and scroll, sometimes it would like go from here and then it would go off till it got to the next one if there was a real long gap or if there was an image. So like if I was scrolling and then I had this like big long image, the highlighted link would stop being highlighted for a second as you like went past it. So we updated the code to that like the previous link will always stay active until it reaches that next one. There'll never be a link that's not highlighted active. Anyway, there's just like a lot of little things like that that we've improved. So this is like a huge update in a lot of ways, even though it doesn't maybe seem that big. Anyway, I'm excited about this plugin. This is, this is um, I don't know, it's just like a fun plugin that I made and I'm just so glad that so many people are using it. It's really getting popular. Um, if you could leave a review, that would really, really help. Um, just shows 
um, the quality of the product and our customer service and all that. We really appreciate it. It really helps. People really rely on reviews these days. I mean, I do too. And just seeing other real people leaving reviews will mean a lot. Um, so I would appreciate that. And yeah, let me know what else you want to add. I mean, I'm totally open to whatever feature ideas you have. Anything that needs improved, let us know. And yeah, we'll see you all in the next video.